at 8 and 10 on MSNBC. Keith Overman is joining us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Say they... Okay. Say they love you. The left wing loves you. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, we have a left wing crowd. That would not happen to you in Branson, Missouri. Well, thank goodness we're not there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, and you and I both went to Cornell. Yes, at, simultaneously for a little I, I was while. Say, and they survived. What year did you graduate? 79. Okay, I graduated '78, so we must have. No, we crossed paths. I know, I knew of you then. Really? You oh, know yeah, oh, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. What? Bill, I wonder why you don't remember. I don't. And... <laughs> <laughs> I, I... Thank you for reminding me of that. Of I was going to say, how do you think the, the the political atmosphere of Cornell affected us? And again, I'm not asking this rhetorically. I don't remember because I was stoned. Yeah. So, <laughs> what was going on on campus that might have affected my politics? Well, you would have missed by one year. Uh, so we had a, this great tradition, uh, which we were all talk, told about as soon as we got there, of uh, students taking over the buildings. Right. Sometimes with machine guns. We're talking real political protest about wow. racial injustice, all of that. In my senior year, I was called to do a live report from a takeover at the main administration building. And it was four kids in there who, who wanted extensions on their student loans so they could graduate on time. There had been some sea change in the nature of protest <laughs> at this mecca right. of liberalism. It was no longer right. about us. It was about right. us. Right. Like this. So there was there was this increasing kind of conservatism that was already sneaking so in. So you were you were a, a reporter even then. We had a college radio station that wow. was run by students and owned, and I did mostly sports. But and and uh, Ann Coulter yeah. accuses you of, of not really being from Cornell. Right. No, of going to the Ag School or something. I went to the Ag School. Right. You know what the Ag School was, right? It was a it was a New York State uh, Cornell seven colleges, and it has uh, three of them that are are funded in part by the state of New York. As Andrew knows, having gone through this too, if you're a New York resident and you go to the ag school, in my day the price was like $800 a semester. Right. The kid sitting next to me in the, from the arts college, wherever he was from, was paying $10,000 a semester. You do the math again. Right. The diploma said exactly the same thing, Cornell University, and I took half my classes in arts. So I'm the idiot because I went to the ag school, apparently. Well, I'm the idiot because I just debated Ann Coulter. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you have no. any marks on you? You're all right. I didn't. I have sure. a clone, and I sent the clone That's to debate Ann. <laughs> and by much? the way, the clone kicked her ass. I was going to say. Okay. No, I'm kidding. How much intellectual Sorry. energy did you have to use on that one? <laughs> All right, let me, let me ask you about Dick Cheney, yeah. because I watch your show, yeah. and you got very mad at him. He said something last week. He said he is talking about Obama. Mm -hmm. Dick Cheney said he is making some choices that, in my mind, will raise the risk to the American people of another attack. Mm -hmm. And... You and a lot of the left wing went batshit. I, I don't understand what's wrong with that comment. I don't agree with Dick Cheney. Right. But why, why, why shouldn't he well, say that? Well, there's nothing wrong with him, with him, theoretically, him saying that, except if it is to some degree designed to knock down people's confidence that this administration has as much idea or, as, uh, or maybe more than the previous one did about how to protect this nation. I mean, if we use the Bush barometer on how B Barack Obama is doing, the answer is, well, if he's doing perfectly, he's kept us safe for 60 days, right? I mean, that's, what all the, that's all we hear now about the Bush administration. Well, they kept us safe after 9-11. Don't count the first 20% of the first term. If you're going to set that as the, as the, as the standard for your own work, you need to, to uh, contextualize the following guy's work in the same way. If things are largely about confidence and security and people having a, uh, at least the sense that they're going to see the next day, it doesn't help to have a man who is just in the government, who may or may not have any perception of reality, which is the big issue, saying, <clears throat> I see ghosts. They're going speaking, to come and get us. But speaking of seeing ghosts, you still... Thanks a lot, Dick. You, you still count... <laughs> but, but you still say at the end of every show how many days it is yeah. since Bush declared mission accomplished yes. in Iraq. Shouldn't we let that go? First of all, things in Iraq are real different. Yeah, well, there's two things. One, uh, it is, it, it's because, all right, there's a television consideration for it. It's sort of like a, a symbol of the show. Uh, so I'll, I'll plead guilty of the commercialism of that. But also, there's still Americans in harm way, harm's way there. And until they are no longer in harm's way, I think that 
10 seconds at the end of the show or five seconds at the end of the show is, is a worthwhile investment in reminding people that they are there doing our dirty business for us, and we should just give them five seconds a day. That's not to mention that... Not to mention that we're still spending $10 yep. billion dollars every single month on that wall. Well, that is the bigger point, yes. And let me ask you this, let me, because you're in the Senate, and I've been reading in the last week about Obama's budget and how the Democrats in the Senate and the House are basically blocking a lot of the proposals that we all thought were going to be this new world when Obama took office, like limiting tax deductions claimed by the wealthiest 1.2% 1 1 blocked by Rangel and Baucus. Farmers, the biggest welfare queens in the world, finally Obama took them off, took them on in his budget, but Kent Conrad, Democrat from North Dakota, I guess, that's not going to happen. Cap and trade, which is about global warming, being blocked by the senators from the dirty coal states like Byrd and Levin, Pryor and Bai. I assume case... these things will not happen. What will happen... I know, but Democrats isn't... are supposed to be the good well, guys. Well... And they suck, too. <laughs> I'm proud to be an independent working with the Democrats. I wouldn't have said suck if you were a Democrat, Bernie. <laughs> but what, we, yes, you would what Obama is trying <laughs> to do, which I think deserves all of our support, is after eight years of do-nothingism at best, what he's doing is placing on the table the real crises facing this country. We have got to address the crisis in health care right. because it's an economic issue. 46 million without uninsurance. Right. The Republicans will say no, no, no. What we have begun to do right. in education, expand Pell Grants, we doubled the amount of money for child care. Doubled. That's a pretty good start in addressing a major serious problem in this country. But what I'm saying is all these issues that are going through committee now, which are now chaired by all the Democrats, the problems are coming from the Democrat head of the committees. This is even before they get to the Republicans. But I think people have to continue to... <clears throat> communicate to their le legislators because a lot of these folks are from states where they are in danger of losing their seats. You know, their state, there are moderate states. And so if people in those states want to support a democratic agenda, we have to continue to express ourselves to our leaders. Yeah, pressure, I yeah. think, is what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's our country. We got to do it. Uh oh, can I ask a question? Are we trying to do too much? Honestly, you know, all of this, there's a lot of things going on here, and, and they're all things that I think we all want to on happen. show are we trying to do too? Well, we're always trying to do too much, but <laughs> no, I think, you know, a lot of Obama's, there are a lot of initiatives that are taking place here, and the question is, how much bandwidth does anybody have to really get any of these things done? Well, the done? answer is, everything is related to everything else. That's right. Well, right now, what I Bush left that. us is an economy which is a disaster. Right. Unemployment is soaring. How do you not deal with the economy? But unfortunately, the patient is flatlining right now. No, I don't so think so. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, but I think that you have a major economic crisis, you've got a health care crisis, you've got an environmental crisis, and it's about time that the American people, the President and Congress, began addressing these issues. I'm happy for him to address these issues. i just like to see, and I think we would all like to see, this crisis, the economic crisis, we're in a crisis, which is different. Where the health care issue is a crisis unto itself, but it's a different level of crisis. Directly and related to the economic crisis. Eventually. But nope, the question is whether today. we can actually get out of this hole we're in right this minute, because that is what's affecting most Americans but, as well, we speak. this explains to you what's going on in the Senate. I mean, this group of senators is literally a group of senators who has, who has grouped together to slow down not stop, not block, but at least slow down the Obama agenda. Because Harry Reid represents the Obama agenda in the Senate. And so now you have this whole new group of senators going, okay, hold on, we're going to be a little bit more moderate about things. It's interesting. Well, what's also yeah. interesting, and let's not forget, that last session, the Republicans brought forth more filibusters, 95 filibusters, than any time in American history. So let's not ignore our Republican friends there who are yeah. saying no yeah, to virtually yeah, yeah. every progressive initiative. Why, do, why are we having filibusters? This used to be something that only happened in Jimmy Stewart movies. <laughs> why does, and, and, if, and if they're threatening a filibuster, why doesn't Harry Reid, your boy in, Cong, in the Senate, why doesn't he make them go through with it? Make them stand up there, yeah. read the phone book, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, no bathroom breaks, yeah. make them pee in their pants. Right. If, if yeah. they really want to filibuster... It doesn't quite work like that. 
Uh, and the answer is, first of all, I think he should do more of that, and we are beginning to do more of that. We've been in for several weekends right now, and I think that the 